Hello, I'm Tom Allen. Today on This Is My Music, violinist David Adams. David Adams is first violinist of the St. John String Quartet and concertmaster of Symphony New Brunswick. The St. John String Quartet will be familiar to CBC listeners for their many regional and national broadcasts, as well as their tours of the Maritimes and Central Canada. Since 1993, the quartet has released six CDs that have earned them a Juno nomination and an East Coast Music Award. Their latest, Canadian Hits Unplugged, has them performing Rebecca Pellet arrangements of 16 songs by Canadian pop music icons including Leonard Cohen, Joni Mitchell, The Tragically Hip, and Stan Rogers, his famous Northwest Passage. David Adams grew up in Winnipeg and by the age of four was already singing in several choirs. At six, he traveled to Toronto to take part in the hit recording of Bobby Jimpy's centennial song, Canada. David was also fascinated by the violin and started lessons around that time. He studied with Francis Chaplin, who also taught violinist James Ennis. David began music studies at Brandon University in Manitoba and then moved east to the University of Toronto. His main teacher was Victor Danchenko at the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto. In 1987, David was offered the position of concertmaster and his wife, Sonia Adams, the position of principal cello in Symphony New Brunswick. So they moved to St. John, New Brunswick, where part of their job was to form a string quartet. The St. John String Quartet make up the core of Symphony New Brunswick and are artists in residence at the University of New Brunswick, St. John. David Adams lives in St. John, New Brunswick, and he is the host of This Is My Music Today. Hello, my name is David Adams, and this is my music. I want to share with you some music that's very special to me. We're going to hear some brilliant Canadian soloists like James Ennis and Martin Beaver, and ensembles like Symphony Nova Scotia. We're also going to hear a favorite violin concerto of mine that still eludes me to this day, and it's played by the brilliant violinist Michael Rabin. And we'll also hear a recording that I was part of, which was at the top of the charts in Canada for two weeks in 1967. I hope you'll stay with us today. We have some interesting stories and more great music to share. Robert Schumann's iconic piano quintet in E-flat is special to me for a couple of reasons. Early on in my St. John's String Quartet career, we were invited to tour Japan several times. On one of these tours, we performed the Schumann Piano Quintet six times over three weeks with six different pianists. The second reason this work is special to me is that I studied this piece listening to the Orford String Quartet with Anton Querty on the piano. I was in the right place at the right time at the University of Toronto when the Orford String Quartet was in residence. As part of my chamber music course, I had the opportunity to sit in on their rehearsals. I was struck by how they worked together. They used a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and they would play a few bars of music and then play it back and have a lively discussion on what worked and what didn't work. We used these techniques to prepare our own string quartet for our first major tour, and we worked on the Schumann in this fashion. I was recently introduced to a fantastic recording of this work by pianist Life Ova Onsens and the Artemis Quartet. Let's listen to them play the majestic opening movement of Schumann's Piano Quintet.
Wow, that was the Artemis Quartet with Life Over Onsense with the first movement of Schumann's Piano Quintet. That very much could be the next gold standard for that work. My name is David Adams, and this is my music. I remember when I was four years old, my parents were watching a movie, and I piped up with the question, what makes the sound of the sky? After some thought, they realized I was talking about the violins playing very high notes, sort of soaring up there in the sky. So that is what captured my imagination to the violin as a very young child. The next piece appeals to my hearing. The magical opening movement from Prokofiev's first violin concerto begins with the solo violin somewhere up in the sky, with the orchestra slowly awakening from their dream state. We will hear the wonderful Canadian violinist Martin Beaver navigate this, but first, allow me to connect the dots between Martin Beaver, Prokofiev, and his performance. In the early 30s, Prokofiev, the composer, became very good friends with the famous Russian virtuoso David Oistrakh, who not only learned how to play this concerto from him directly, but he also promoted it widely. Later, David Oistrakh, had a prodigy violin student by the name of Viktor Danchenko, to whom he taught the violin concerto. Danchenko then had a prodigy violin student of his own by the name of Martin Beaver, to whom he taught the violin concerto. And now Martin Beaver is passing along his knowledge to his own students. And so this is how we learn to play these great works with the gentle passing of information from generation to generation. Martin and I were both born in Winnipeg. We both studied with Victor Danchenko in Toronto, and we played quite a bit of chamber music together, which CBC Halifax often recorded for broadcast. Okay, let's transcend into the clouds with Martin Beaver playing the first movement of Prokofiev's first violin concerto with the Kitchener Waterloo Symphony and conductor Jose Komatsu. 